Welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your Writer's Eye entries. Enjoy! Let's take a long, slow look together at this photograph by Carrie Mae Weems called Untitled Coffee Pot from 1988 and 1989. Let your eye wander all over the image. Take in the details. Perhaps make a visual inventory, a quick list of all the objects you see in this photograph. How does your eye move around the image? What memories or associations do you have to the objects in the composition? If you are with friends or family, share what you see and think about the work of art. I'm fascinated by the use of light in this photograph, the way that light reflects off the electric coffee pot in multiple places. At first glance, the composition seems bare, but then I notice the way the shiny metal reveals other details in the room, leading me to think it may be a kitchen. It looks like there is a light source, like a window, and a long counter. There is a dark vertical line in the center on the left edge of the rectangular light source. It makes me wonder if that form is a distorted reflection of Carrie Mae Weems, the photographer. What do you think? What interests you about this image? It may be hard to read the text in the upper right hand corner. It reads, quote, As a child, I loved the aroma of coffee. Smelling it drove me nuts because it reminded me of cocoa, of chocolate, candy. Anyway, my parents rarely drunk coffee, but when they did, I'd stand at the kitchen table begging like a salivating dog for a lick. Mama and Daddy would be sitting up, elbows on table, talking, sipping like white folks on TV, shooing me away with, you don't need no coffee, coffee will make you black. End quote. When I read the text, I was struck by the sensory language used. I can imagine a child looking up at the kitchen counter, inhaling the powerful smell of coffee. What about you? What images came to mind when you read the text? What new ideas or questions do you have about the photograph after reading the text? What do you wonder about the artist who made it? The text made me wonder about the race of the narrator and the race of the artist. Carrie Mae Weems is African American. From the text, especially the part where she says, quote, Mama and Daddy would be sitting up, elbows on table, talking, sipping like white folks on TV, end quote. I inferred that the narrator is black too. What do you think? What issues of race and identity are raised by the text? Carrie Mae Weems was born April 20th, 1953 in Portland, Oregon. She's from, as she describes them, quote, a big, wonderful, crazy family, end quote. Weems received her BFA from Cal Arts in 1981 and an MFA from UC San Diego in 1984. She was a graduate student in folklore at UC Berkeley from 1984 to 1987. For over 30 years, Carrie Mae Weems has employed photography, text, fabric, audio, digital images, installation, and video to investigate family relationships, cultural identity, sexism, class, political systems, and the consequences of power. Weems is considered one of the most influential American artists working today, and her bodies of work, exhibitions, and awards are too numerous to mention, and include the MacArthur Genius Grant and the U.S. State Department Medal of Arts. Some of her most notable works in series include Family Pictures and Stories, 1978 to 1984, American Icons, 1988 and 89, of which this photograph is a part, The Kitchen Table Series, 1990, From Here I Saw What Happened and Cried, 1995, and Museums, 2006. I have learned a lot by listening to what Carrie Mae Weems says about her own work. I'm going to read four quotes from her that tell us a lot about this photograph. Quote, and so I'm always questioning what has been left in and what has been left out. 
What is my relationship to what has been made historically and what has been left out? And so then, how to reframe, how to reposition, and how to insert, for the first time, a body that has not often been there, or to pull forward a body that rests in the background, end quote. Quote, Many people have asked me what the work is about, and a lot of people have attempted to reduce the work to a question of race. I think that's unfortunate because there are so many questions, issues, resolves. Race is a small part of that greater human effort on our part. All of us are really interested in one way or another this question. When we say the work is about race, it tends to diminish the work. End quote. Quote, I always think about the work ultimately as dealing with questions of love and greater issues of humanity. The way it comes across is in echoes of identity and echoes of race and echoes of gender and echoes of class. End quote. Quote, At the end of the day, it has a great deal to do with the breadth of the humanity of African Americans who are usually stereotyped and narrowly defined and often viewed as a social problem. I'm thinking that it's not about social problems, that it's about social constructions. The work has to do with an attempt to reposition and reimagine the possibility of women and the possibility of people of color, and to that extent, it has to do with what I always called unrequited love. End quote. I wonder what new ideas you have about the work, now that you've had some time to consider some of the themes in Carrie Mae Weems' works. How might you employ text to tell a story? evoke a memory, or address themes you care about. We're all looking forward to the day when we can gather safely at the museum. Until then, please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu.